For this project you'll be folding some paper to make an origami shape. So you'll need the write-up sheets for the project and that's what you'll use to describe the mathematics of what's going on and you'll need some origami paper. Now if you look at the top of your sheet you will see that it says you have to turn in your completed origami to receive any credit for this project. So without the folded project you get no credit. Let's talk first about folding the pieces and the type of paper you can use to make your origami. So let's talk about the paper you want to use first. You need square paper, and there actually is some pretty fancy origami paper that you could use, uh, and that's fine if that's what you want to use, but just make sure that if it has printing on one side, that it's plain on the other side, because you're going to have to, on some of your pieces of paper, um, show what's going on uh, mathematically on that plain side. Now you don't have to have anything fancy like origami paper. Uh, what you're going to see me using is actually paper from a notepad that came with five different colors of paper in it. So what I've got is paper that is colored, but it's also blank on both sides. So I'll have something that's got at least a little color to it. Now you can also print out the last page of the project sheets that I'm giving you because the last page has got some squares on it that you could cut out along the edges of the squares and you would have your own origami paper. And if you really want colored paper, um, all you have to do is print the squares out on colored paper and you have colored origami paper. So let's talk about how to fold each of these pieces. Each piece is called a module. So what we're going to be doing is folding one module and then you're going to want to fold all 11 of your pieces identically. So we're going to start with one piece of paper and we'll fold it from corner to corner so that we have an isosceles right triangle. Unfold it, and if we can unfold it, there we go. Unfold it, and then fold the opposite corners. And if you make good firm creases, this will always come out better. All right, now open it up, turn it over, and now we're going to fold from edge to edge. So we want to see a rectangle that's twice as long as it is wide. And then unfold the paper again and I want you to position it so that that line that you just folded, that fold that you just made, is vertical. And here's the two diagonal folds. So now take a look at these two corners that are at the very, very top of the paper. You're going to fold each of those corners to the center of the square. So you've got these little tiny isosceles right triangles that you're folding. And now the entire paper looks like a pentagon. It's an irregular pentagon, but it's still a pentagon. It's got five sides to it. All right, now that fold that you made vertically is still there, so what we're going to do is fold the paper in half along that fold that we just made. And so now we've got this quadrilateral. And I'm going to turn it so you can see what I'm about to do. Um, right here, this fold that we've already made, and it's actually the same fold on the other side, so what we're going to do is hold on to the piece right here on this little acute angle and then we're going to take this right angle and just push it in. Let me open it up a little and try to turn it so you can see it from both sides. So I'm going to push it in right here. Push it like this. And then we'll flatten it so that we have this 
parallelogram and it almost looks like it has little wings. So that's one module. Now what you want to do is fold all 11 pieces, but it's only, to, only going to take eight of these to actually make the project. The other three pieces you'll be using to answer some of the questions. Now part two is to actually assemble the project and you only need eight pieces to do that. After you assemble the project and you answer all the questions for the project, what you want to do when you're finally done and you're ready to turn your project in is glue or staple or tape your project uh, to the bottom part of this page. So you'll see there's a space there for you to do that in. So let's see how to actually put this project together. Okay, so I've got eight pieces here. Um, I'm using two different colors because I think it just ends up prettier, uh, but you can have all the same color if you want to, or as many different colors as you like, but you only need eight pieces. And you're going to start with two of those pieces, so I'll start with one of each color. All right, so what you need to look at, and I'm, I'm right-handed, so if you're left-handed and this works better for you, uh, in flipped over, then, then you're going to have to think about this in the opposite way. But I'm going to hold this piece um, with, think of these kind of like wings, with the wings to the right, and I'm holding it here, so it's kind of like the nose. So the wings are to the right, and then I have the nose in my left hand. And I'm going to hold it so that I'm pointing the nose down. The other piece, I also have the wings to the right, and what I'm going to do is slide the wings inside, or slide the nose, I should say, of the one on the right inside the wings of the one on the left. And then you'll notice that the tips of these wings are extending above the wings of this red one. And I'm going to fold those tips in right along the edge of the red one. And once I get those folded in, that's what's going to hold this together. I'm just going to slide this red one as far as I can back to the right. And now I'm going to continue that with all the rest of them. And I'm going to alternate the colors. Okay, so now that we're down to the point where we've got all eight of these on here, we have to attach this last one to the first one. And this is just a little bit tricky. We have to kind of twist a little bit to get the nose of the first one inside the wings of the last one. And then you're going to have to tuck these little ends in to this part that you've already folded. And as I said, that can be just a little bit tricky because it's a little bit of a tight fit. But that is what's going to hold the whole thing together. So there's one of them. And make room for it. This is actually not as difficult as I'm making it look, but I'm trying not to bump the camera here. with my other hand. There we go. Get that tucked in there. All right, and sometimes you'll find some of them want to pop out again when you're first starting to make it. That's okay. Stick it back in. All right, so there's the last one. All right, and at this point you might want to kind of very gently press on all these folds. And what we have at this point is the shape we're going to call an octagon for obvious reasons. Now you can also push together on opposite sides. And if you do that, and this is another one of those things, the very first time you do it, it may be just a little bit stubborn because it doesn't quite know what you want it to do. Ah, that popped out. It's okay. Put it back in. And when you push it all together, what you have 
is, boy, that is being very stubborn. What you have, I'm looking to see if something is binding here. See, part of me says, cut this out. This looks like this doesn't work. But I think I need you to see that sometimes we have to work at this a little more carefully to make it all fit. I'm going to take that out because I know that's what's causing me problems. Let's slip it back in there. There we go. All right. So that is our pinwheel. Now once you get it in that pinwheel form, you can pull it back apart to make the octagon, or you can push it back together to make the pinwheel. So you saw what was happening there. One of these little tabs was sticking a little bit. It was not exactly folded in the right place. So if that happens, that's fine. Just pull it out put it back where it belongs. You'll have either your pinwheel or you'll have your octagon. So now that you've got your origami done, it's time to do some math. And the first thing you're going to have to do is answer some questions about the symmetries that you see in these two shapes, the pinwheel and the octagon. Now, if you look at the pictures, you'll see I've just got gray pictures of them. You're looking at the symmetry of the outline of the figure. You're not thinking about symmetries uh, that might be based on colors in the figure. So you're simply looking at the outside and you're answering some questions about whether the shape has dihedral symmetry. And if it does, explain what the order of that dihedral symmetry is and draw the lines of symmetry on those gray pictures that you see. Um, and does it have rotational symmetry? And if it does, um, show with a dot where the center of that rotation is. For part four, you're going to have to look at the area of the octagon. And remember, the octagon is, uh, has a hole in the middle. So you're looking for the area of just one side of that octagon and you're going to have to explain how you found that area. So start, the first question is asking you how big your piece of paper was that you started with to make each of your modules. Um, then you have to tell me what the area of one side of your completed octagon is um, and then explain how you got that area. Now for part six, you're going to be using one of those 11 pieces that you did not use to make your pinwheel with. So you're going to be looking at the area of a module. You're going to uh, compare the area of the whole square uh, to the area of one side of that module. So let's see what that means you're going to be looking at. So let's say this is one of your modules that you folded but you didn't use to make your pinwheel. And this line that you see here is a line that I drew on it to show where the fold was. What you want to do is take this and on one side only you want to color in that side of the module. And then you want to unfold it. And you can see I've drawn lines on all the folds for this uh, module. And then for the area of this module, what we're looking for is the area that's taken up by this colored in part. So we're not looking for the total surface area of both sides of the module. We're just looking for the area of one side. So at this point, you already will know how big your square is and you can use what you know about 
area to find the area of this colored in part. Now when you're done answering those questions about area of the module, you want to attach either glue or staple or tape uh, that module to the bottom of this piece of paper. For the next part, you're going to be looking at angle relationships in the module. So you will need the last two pieces of paper that you folded but did not use to make your origami to answer these questions. So you'll look at your two last pieces of paper. You'll unfold them and you want to look at the folds in the paper. And you're going to identify two parallel line segments and a transversal to that. So remember, if it helps, you can turn the paper to maybe look for two parallel lines and a transversal. And you're going to have to identify alternate interior angles and you're going to have to identify vertical angles. On one of the pieces of paper, you're going to find alternate interior angles, so you're going to have to use a pen or a pencil or something to draw the parallel lines, draw the transversal, and then draw in the alternate interior angles. So you're labeling the angles by drawing them in and you're also going to determine the angle measure of those alternate interior angles. And then with your other piece of paper, you're going to do the same thing, so you'll identify the parallel lines and the transversal, but in the other piece of paper, you're going to, from there, after you've drawn in the parallel lines and the transversal, uh, you're going to indicate two angles that are vertical angles, and you're going to have to find their angle measures. Now, those two pieces of paper that you will have marked the parallel or parallel line segments and the transversals on and you've also marked the alternate interior angles on one and the vertical angles on the other. Uh, you're going to want to attach those two pieces of paper um, to the sheet as well. Now remember for both of these it says to find a pair of angles so they're likely is more than one pair of alternate interior angles, you only need to identify and label one pair and find the angle measures of each of those angles. And for vertical angles, there will be more than one pair of vertical angles. You only need to identify and label one pair and find the measure of each of those angles.